Okay, now you've planned out your goals and even implemented five or six goals in your business already. The next step in goal setting is to manage those goals until they are reached. How often has it been for you, you and your company to have set goals, have implemented those goals, and then you don't reach the goals? Well, that's normally because the reason they're not well managed throughout the year. The first month or two, everybody's on board, and then it sort of slay, kind of weans off and never reach the actual goals by the end of the year. What we're going to discuss in this video is how to manage those goals and make sure you reach your goals for this fiscal year. And we're going to do that right now. Once you've planned out your goals and then also implemented your goals, the next technique is to maintain a very positive attitude throughout the whole year if necessary until you've reached those goals, whatever they may be, whether they're personal or even business related. What you're going to be asking uh, not only of yourself but also of the team members and even in the company is to step out of their comfort zone, to move a little bit further out each and every month until you reach your goal by the end of the year. It takes a lot of leadership to do that and to inspire people to keep them motivated to keep going forward to reach in that goal. Leadership is extremely important at this time when you're implementing your goals and when you're trying to monitor them and watch them and observe and record and also make adjustments as needed throughout the year. Managing your goals each month, making sure that you're reaching the milestones that you have already set in the planning process. Now, at the same time, while you're leading and making sure people are going a little bit beyond their comfort zone, the next technique in managing your goals, once you've already implemented them, is to make sure you don't exceed your limits. Pushing all the time and, and, and trying to keep pushing forward and forward and forward, each time you're making a uh, milestone, you push harder for the next one and harder for the next one. Never taking a break, uh, it's not necessarily a, a good thing. People get worn out and eventually get frustrated and don't even want to do it anymore. Uh, what's the point? So you got to know people's limits and not only uh, the team member's limits, but also your own limits. You can only push so much. And every once in a while, you need to kind of slow it down a little bit and then get back into it. So be very watchful of what your limits are. An example of that is that several years ago, the four-minute mile barrier was there. No one ever ran faster than four minutes on a mile. Not until one individual did it. Once he broke that four-minute mile that same year, many other people were also breaking the four-minute mile. And even in the Olympics that year, they broke the four-minute mile. Always know your limits. Make sure that you uh, don't push them so far that they get worn out. But at the same time, give them a little bit of breaks every once in a while to kind of relax a little bit and then get them back into the next goal that you're trying to hit or try to get them back into the next milestone that you're trying to reach. Another technique for managing your uh, goals is to use mentors. Uh, people that uh, you, you highly respect, that you can go and meet with them and, and go over how your plans are going, making sure that your goals are on track if they have any pointers or maybe some suggestions on how you can make some adjustments to even reach your goals better or even faster, or if you're not uh, in line as you thought you would be at this point in the planning process, they can give you some recommendations on maybe how to get back on track. So it's really important to go talk to your mentors. And your mentors can be anybody, not necessarily in the profession but uh, of engineering, but also they could be outside of engineering, someone... Uh, uh, that's a close friend of yours that uh, has nothing to do with engineering. But just being able to speak to them and get their point of view from a totally different uh, viewpoint can be very invaluable to you. So always make sure you use mentors to review uh, what you're doing. It's just a, a five-minute talk can be worth uh, months of work. Another technique in uh, managing your goals is to make sure you inspect exactly what you expect to happen. Uh, in other words, uh, always monitor the results of each of the uh, goals that you're setting. Every time you implement a, a plan, 
you're you're expecting certain results to happen from that. If they're not happening, then you got to wonder why isn't it happening? Is it because the plan that you put in place is not working like you thought it would? Uh, perhaps uh, someone is not doing the plan exactly the way you had instituted it. So there's multiple reasons why uh, the results are not meeting your expectations. So when that's happening, you got to make some adjustments. Uh, it could be an internal adjustment. It could be within the plan itself. It could be that the objective that you put down, the, the way you're going to solve it, is completely wrong. And perhaps those mentors that we talked about may suggest some other ideas that you can implement real quick that can get you back on pace. So you want to make sure you're inspecting what's happening with the results. Are they what you expected? If they're not, if they're way below, then you got to make some adjustments. If they're above your expectations, then great. Then you keep going forward, figure out what you're doing that's working so good, and, uh, and, and keep doing it right on through the end of the year. Another technique in managing your goals is to make sure that you manage the fear that you may have about implementing these goals, about actually reaching those goals. You may be a small company that's trying to double its uh, revenues this year, so that's a, a big, a big, big goal to have. So is that kind of giving you some fear? Because going from, a let's say, a $300,000 uh, revenue stream of last year to a $600,000 revenue this year, that could be a very daunting task. And if you're not on pace to do that, you can give some uh, reasons like, well, that was probably a little too high anyway. Well, that may not be true. It's just that it's your own fear of reaching 600,000 because 600,000 may mean you have to hire more people. It may mean you have to bring on more clients. It means that uh, you may have to have more resources, more company resources, more computers, more uh, a lot of different things in order to reach that goal. And that can be a, a very feel, uh, that can be a very fearful uh, expectation. And so by you having those fears, you yourself will limit yourself and stop you from reaching those goals. So to counter that, you got to be able to manage your fears. And, and that is to keep them in check. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of scary things to do in, in business. Uh, there's a lot of scary things that you can do in business. And goal setting can be scary. But if you manage your fears, which is by knowing that you've done your research, you know that if you do these particular things, in, in line with one another, that the result will happen. If you don't do these various tasks, then the results won't happen. So it, it's more of an educated understanding of how to reach your goal. And so it eliminates a lot of that fear. That's what we call managing your fears. The next, tech, the next technique, of course, is failures and setbacks are going to happen. It's uh, it's predetermined. <laughs> They're going to happen. You're going to have some failures and you're going to have some setbacks. The main thing is, is what you're going to do about it. You know, a character of an individual is not how great they are or how successful they are. It's more about when you hit rock bottom, how do you get back up on your feet and keep going? And that's what failure and, and setbacks do to you. There's, they're going to happen. No one expected in 2020 a pandemic to happen. Okay, I, I don't care what business model out there there were, uh, no one expected it. And so the companies who survive it, they dealt with the, uh, with the setbacks, they readjusted their companies, they made some changes on how they did business, and in 2021, they're still here. The companies who couldn't make those uh, adjustments, Whatever the situation may be, whether it's their fault or somebody else's or what have you, they're not going to be here in 2021. So that's the importance of being able to handle uh, failures and setbacks. Hopefully 2021 or any other year afterwards, we don't have these problems of a pandemic or some of that scale. But it can be a lot smaller. Uh, you can have a failure and uh, you weren't able to meet up. The milestones for this project. Uh, you're way behind, you're a month behind, and the client's upset about it, 
and you, you're doing the best you can. The main thing is, is that you get back on track, get a schedule going, and say, we're going to get this done by this date. Sorry we couldn't meet this uh, predetermined date, but we at least make this date, and then stick to it and get there. That's, that's being able to manage your failures and your setbacks. Uh, of course, the next uh, uh, technique that we all need to watch, and, and I'm probably the, the worst of them all about this, and that is to fight procrastination. Uh, procrastination is, is it, it, can, uh, it can ruin a company. Uh, it can ruin you as an individual. It's, uh, it's something that you've got to always watch and make sure that you're not procrastinating. When these uh, various tasks need to be done, you need to get them done. Don't put them off. Every morning, you should have a list of tasks that need to be done. And in those lists, they should be top tasks that need to be completed. Those are your priorities. Get the priorities done. Once the priority is done, then you can work on the less priorities. Um, it may be something as simple as uh, uh, make payroll today. <laughs> Employees would really appreciate that. That's a high priority. Procrastination and waiting until tomorrow, that's going to make somebody upset. I'm pretty sure I know who. You do too. So um, always stay, uh, always try to fight procrastination. Don't put things off. Just get them done. And no matter what they are, we always say here in our company that it's the small stuff that seems to get us all the time. And these are the things that we procrastinate on. It's the smaller items. It seems like the big items, those are easy. We can get those. We know that they're coming. We got to work on them. We got to get them done. But small things like uh, getting somebody's signature on a, uh, on a letter seems to kind of <laughs> be a procrastination point. But we know that we got to hit a certain deadline for a drain study submittal or, or a, a permit to be issued. We know that we have to hit that deadline. And we make those. So that's why it's always important to always fight that procrastination. Get things done. Get them out of the way. And that way you can move on to less priority type task. One of the things you want to do is um, as you reach those milestones and you nail it, you submitted that drain study on time, or you submitted that traffic study on time, or the improvement plans were approved on time or ahead of schedule, uh, he was the contractor is able to get his permits on time. Even if you're in software, if you get were able to finish the the uh, line of codes uh, on time on schedule, those uh, small accomplishments they should be celebrated each time. It doesn't mean going out and have a major party or anything, but a good uh, pat on the back. Hey, did a good job, man. We got it in there. Just that little bit of a little bit of celebration is a good feeling. And it goes a long way. So you always want to kind of celebrate your accomplishments. If you're doing 20, 30 projects in an office and, and milestones are happening and everybody's on track, constantly reinforce it. Constantly telling them, hey, man, awesome. We're doing a good job. We're moving forward. And you may choose like once a month to have just a day of uh, a celebration at the end of the month, maybe at the end of the quarter. They say, you know, this is what the company's done. This is where we're at. We're doing a great job, and uh, we're all on track. All of our projects are working great. Uh, we've had maybe one or two projects. They're a little bit behind schedule, but looks like we're going to get them right back on schedule. And that's celebrating, getting everybody a good warm fuzzy because people really do appreciate that to give them some recognition that they've accomplished some things, and uh, the company's doing great. So... Always remember to award and celebrate your accomplishments. The next uh, technique is, of course, to have some fun. Okay, um, in engineering, we, we constantly are sitting in front of a computer, or we're constantly dealing with the clients, or out in the fields and the contractors, and and so it's it, you're constantly dealing with issues and, and problems and designs, and you're always trying to to solve them, and it becomes uh, every day. It, you don't know what's going to be coming your way. And so that's a lot of stress sometimes. And so to have some fun, be around people you enjoy working with, it goes a long way. It doesn't mean to goof off, no, but it does mean uh, to, uh, to put, put a happy situation on, on things. Uh, we spend our whole days uh, working on uh, in the field or in the office, 
or, or a little bit of each and to be around people that knows how to enjoy what they're doing and enjoy the work that they're doing is is makes what we do a whole lot easier and a happy crew will do a, a great job on the work a group of people that are grumpy and not so happy and dissatisfied with things uh, they're not going to do a very good job and i guarantee you a lot of those goals are going to go right on down because uh, they're not happy anyway so you want to make people as comfortable and as satisfied at work as, as you possibly can and uh, telling a few jokes every once in a while it goes a long way so we like to kind of lighten it up every once in a while in our office and I'm sure you would like to lighten it up in your office too all the time don't keep them all stressed out and overworked keep that in mind now of course the, the final uh, technique it kind of brings all this around together uh, as we reach our milestones and, and complete the projects uh, we celebrate, have some fun about it, and uh, then we got to sit down and start setting some new goals, getting on to the next one. It's You can only celebrate and goof off for so long, and and then you got to get back in there and go back to work and, and move forward. Keep moving forward. Keep setting goals. Once you accomplish your goals, whatever they have right now, you may have five or six goals, and once you accomplish those goals, Set five or six more goals. Each goal is completed, replace it with another one. So that way your company is always growing, always moving forward, and always doing great. So that's, that's the importance of managing goals. Always observe them. Make sure you know what's happening with your goals. Every time you implement a, a, a plan, make sure that the results are meeting your expectations. Also, make sure that it, it, you celebrate those small occasions when you're meeting those milestones and have a little bit of fun also doing it. Always manage, always watch, always observe, and then you'll meet, reach your goals as you had planned. Now that you watched the whole video, uh, please go ahead and subscribe down below. Also, there's another video of ours on the side here that you can go ahead and hit right now and, and see what else that we have to offer for you. So until the next video, keep on growing your engineering knowledge and your management knowledge in the engineering profession. We'll see you on the next video.